everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. It's time for my July 2020 full garden tour and update. There have been a lot of things going on and changing in the garden, so I have a lot to go over and I'm just gonna get right into it. All right, so right off the bat, before I even get to the gate, you can see my cucumbers climbing up the fence. It's been, they just started to get really good. Um, we had, they were really bitter for a while. I think it was just a little bit too cold when they were pollinating, but the last few that I picked were really, really good. So that's been a nice refreshing treat. I've got a few like that one that probably need to be picked soon. And then pole beans climbing up out here. These ones are flowering, but we don't have beans on them yet. But we do have beans on the bush bean variety. I can't remember if these are Blue Lake or something else, but they are really nice bean variety. So I've canned a few of them and made some dilly beans. We've been eating them. And uh, yeah, that's been really nice. Really good. And then I've got some sunflowers here that some of the pole beans are climbing up these as well so that's really fun it's nice my cornflowers and California poppies are still hanging in there I can't believe it some of them are going to seed so I'm kind of waiting waiting on seeds so I can harvest those for next year and then my Brussels sprouts I've been pruning so I started pruning the bottom leaves a few weeks back and we've got some sprouts coming on now that are okay, decent. These ones look a little better actually. Um, and then today I came and just whacked off another section of leaves. So that way we're getting a succession of harvest. So we'll, these will be ready down here. Oops. And then these will be ready, you know, a few weeks later rather than having a whole bunch of them ready all at the same time. So that's nice. Over here is just kind of some wild stuff. I've got a Black Eyed Susan about to open that I planted from seed this spring. Got a rosemary over here. Just babies. All of my perennial herbs are very new, so they're all pretty small. They're all just started this year. Some more bush beans, a little basil that's kind of trying to find the light. Some onions. Onions will be coming out soon. Our kale is magnificent. We just have been eating it constantly. It just won't stop. <laughs> um, some orange thyme that I just harvested. That's why it's looking kind of like it's petering out a little bit because I just came and whacked a bunch off to uh, dry for tea. And then I've got some potatoes buried down there as well, which will be ready to harvest soon. I just did my first potato harvest a couple of nights ago on some different plants. So I guess I'll finish this whole bed and then I'll come back around. Over here is where I had my broccoli and my cabbages and I've got basil here now and I did sprinkle some diatomaceous earth. I know everybody has their own opinions on that. I only put it on the soil because the earwigs have just been basically destroying. like literally everything in this bed so i have that sprinkled just in a few different areas around the garden i don't ever put it on the actual flowers i don't want it to get on bees or anything like that so i'm trying to be really really careful i only use it when i you know when our harvest is really truly kind of in danger of being destroyed um so yeah once i pulled out the cabbages and the broccolis those were done I went ahead and put the basils in. I've got a little space here where I've just sowed some lettuce seeds and it's looking dry. So I definitely need to water that when I'm done with this video. And same over here, I've got some lettuce seeds. So this stuff over here gets some afternoon shade and I planted some slow bolt varieties of lettuce. So I'm hoping that they'll stay cool enough and they will maybe provide us with a little bit of lettuce for a while through summer. This is just a cute little potted arrangement. Those are some hybrid dahlias. And I'll try to remember to, 
name the varieties in the description box later. This is my cilantro seed harvest. All of the seed pods, I'm waiting for these to dry so I can keep them for coriander and for next year's plantings. And then these are the rest, the last of the pak choy, which are totally dry and crispy and ready to harvest. Got, pulled my sweet peas out yesterday. So my sweet, or not yesterday, but this weekend, my sweet peas were over here in this kind of bare area at an angle. Um, they were going up a trellis and the timing of them being done was so perfect because the tomatoes were really needing a place to vine out. So seriously couldn't have done that better if I had tried. Got some other peas. I'm just kind of letting these air out a little bit and dry so that I can harvest the seeds inside. And then our food dehydrator. I've been using for herbs. There are a bunch of spinach seed pods in there drying. Um, there's a whole bunch of basil. There's some Cosmo flower heads, some more sweet pea pods, and just different things that I'm trying to get dried out. For my Patreon members, any VIPs that I have get a monthly mail out from me. So they'll be getting some yummy herbs and teas this month. Tomato Jungle is doing great. So Fever Few, I actually whacked it back. I harvested probably eight or nine inches down. Um, harvested all the flowers. They're hanging up in my house drying because there was just way too much. It wouldn't have fit in my dehydrator. And I've already got another flush of blooms coming on. This stuff just, it's amazing. It doesn't, it doesn't ever give up. <laughs> really awesome, so. Excited to see another flush of blooms on there. Some calendula. So I came and also cut back all of my calendula to give it a nice fresh start. And this one's looking much better than it was. This one was looking a lot like this one, which was not great. Um, so I cut it way back a couple of weeks ago and now it's doing good. Same with the chamomile. It was really just having a hard time. Um, this bed, so my drip, it took me a while, once the weather heated up, it took me a while to figure out how much water everything needed that was on the drip. So um, a few things really, really suffered during that time. So I had to kind of come out and prune and give everything a fresh start again. But it's coming back. So this is my tomato jungle. I've got marigolds planted at the base which i think are helping a lot with the pests got a bunch of calendula too does anybody know the name of this calendula variety i can't figure it out i don't know what it is but they're beautiful and they're like this dark color on the underneath and then they're yellow on the top and they are so pretty absolutely love them tomatoes are coming up so as you can see, I like my tomatoes to vine out. I know that's not the most efficient, safe, sa safe, space saving method. What are you barking at? What do you see? Oh no, you are a monster. Okay, that's enough. Um, yeah, so like I have this one that's like pretty much this entire walkway is becoming useless. Like we're sacrificing it to the plants, but that's okay because I have other ways of getting around the garden. <laughs> but my tomatoes just are so happy to vine out. So I'm like, whatever, let them do their thing. I don't... It's their world, I'm just living in it. This is a cute little sign that Zach's grandma got for me. So sweet. Um, this is where I cleared the sweet peas out. So I have another, this is another little backup shady area where I can plant some lettuce if I want to. Um, it doesn't get full deep, deep shade, but it does get dappled shade in the morning. And as these grow and vine over, you know, obviously it's going to get more shade. So I don't really know if I'm going to plant anything here. Just kind of, it's nice to know that I have a little spot if I need it. Um, the basil does really well with part shade too, so... I might, I might do some more basil out here. They are going bonkers. I love it. Having so much fun. I already picked some tomatoes and I've done some pruning. 
these are my peppers so I've got um, peppers kind of shielded from the afternoon Sun as well because they tend to fry here like late afternoon they will just get sunburned and it'll it sucks because you'll have like a really nice looking pepper one day and the next day you'll go out and it'll be completely scalded from the Sun and like you know you'll either have to cut part of it away or it'll just taste like leather and it just it's not happy so I let mine be jungleified by the tomatoes and that way they get a little bit of dappled shade in the afternoon and look at they're perfectly happy to grow like this so this what is the name of this one satish thai pepper and i love this it's like furry like lamb's ear it's like the it's got this woolly hairs on it it's so soft I can't wait to eat one. I probably could. This one looks like it's ready to pick. Cannot wait. I'm gonna make some chili oils, maybe a paste, maybe some hot sauce. I don't know. I don't know. Down here, what's this one? This is a yellow pointy. These are also, oh no, these are ahi verdes. That's different, yeah. No habaneros this year. I don't know, I just couldn't couldn't decide and then I ran out of options and yeah my all flower bucket so I've got bunny tail grass here which if you don't know what bunny tail grass is oh little bee came out um look it up I got the seeds from botanical interests and bunny tail grass is just the cutest thing I'm so excited to see it when it when the um seeds come on the seed pods because they like have these furry little fluffy soft things I don't know what you call them they're like fuzzy they look like little bunny tails and apparently you can like dry it and use it in dried arrangements and you can also dye it with food coloring so looking forward to doing some DIY kind of home decor stuff with that these are my Cape marigolds or African daisies these are not the same as the osteospermum African daisies I was a little disappointed to figure that out after they bloomed I didn't do my research but they are beautiful and this is going to have this vine right here that's coming up are a vining variety of black eyed Susan so I think they'll look really nice together anyways this is a Rose of Sharon which is tiny and it will get to be 8 to 10 feet tall I wish some of the blooms were open so you could see them because they're gorgeous but I'm just keeping it in here for about a year or so until we finish landscaping the area outside of the garden where our chicken coop is going and then I will be putting this in the ground out there for some color so that'll be really nice strawberry patch is great looks like it needs a little water I think things got a little hot a little hot today struggling um, strawberries have been coming on I let some runners go because I do want to multiply this and give some starts away to people so I'm just letting some runners go. I know a lot of people pinch those when it's in fruiting mode, but I kind of want some of them to transplant out. So this is, what is this? This is a salvia of some sort. I uh, can't remember the name of the exact variety. I'll try to look it up and put it in the description if I remember, but it's beautiful. The bees absolutely love it. This is ginger. So I've got the rhizomes planted down below that's the part that you eat that you see in the grocery stores like the rhizome it's kind of similar to like a bulb sort of not really it's a rhizome it's different <laughs> but <laughs> it's under there and then apparently we can eat the leaves and the stems too when we harvest these so I am super stoked to cook with it and maybe put it I want to try it in tea because I love ginger tea and I think that would be so good and um, as for all of the purslane that is there on purpose, it's just a living mulch and it's edible. So if you have purslane in your beds, you really don't need to pull it. It actually does help pull moisture up. If your topsoil is getting really dry, it can actually pull moisture up and it's really good for kind of just keeping your soil alive, feeding the microorganisms and all of that. So then when I go to rotate these crops, and I pull all that out, I'm gonna have really, really nice nutrient dense fo um, soil to plant in. So, and then here I've got another cosmos that hasn't flowered yet. This is my triple crown thornless blackberry that's climbing right here. I'm probably gonna snip it back because I kind of want it to branch out more. 
So for the moment, I'm letting it do what it's doing, but it's gonna get a prune at some point because I do want it bushier than that. There's one zucchini plant and another one back there. Got some dahlias here. And this bad boy, <laughs> that's a raspberry cutting. A friend of mine gave me a couple of cuttings and oh man, did I kill it. <laughs> I'm, st I'm still holding out hope though. I'm gonna wait, <laughs> you never know. See this, see these little buds right here? Those could actually still grow. So, oh, Jess, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just, I don't know why I keep killing these. <laughs> Uh, rhubarb I just did a final harvest I think I'm gonna just let it go and absorb all that it can so you don't want to take all the leaves off at the end of the season with rhubarb you want to leave some leaves on because it's going to photosynthesize and send some energy back down underground for next year so that should give it a nice start for next year uh, moving on more purslane <laughs> Uh, this is our asparagus. We have two year crowns under here, so this won't be ready to harvest until next year or the year after, but it is growing. Lots of purslane. This stuff is good. Have you guys ever eaten this? Let me know in the comments if you've ever eaten purslane, but it does, um, of course I can't pull one off one handed, but um, it's kind of crunchy. You can put it in salads and it kind of has a earthy and also kind of a lemony flavor. And that's what the leaves look like. It doesn't use up a lot of water. In fact, it kind of brings moisture to the top of the soil, which is nice. So uh, my beets and some carrots were here. Just pulled them, made a bunch of pickles. They were delicious. I got a lot of them on the shelf for winter. So now I've got a new planting space. I think I'm gonna put some uh, parsnips and turnips maybe another row of bush beans um, this beautiful something plant I think it might be a bottle gourd or it might be a spaghetti squash or it might be a pumpkin <laughs> if anyone knows let me know this is what happens to me you guys I just plant so much stuff that I don't know what it is until it starts to <laughs> Till it starts to have fruit. This is a loofah. I know that. <laughs> and that needs to go up on the trellis too someday. <laughs> oh, my herbs. Perennial herb bed. They're getting a start. Oh, the lighting's not too great right now. Sorry about that. Doing the best I can. Getting these videos done whenever I have time. I don't know, guys. Should I try to walk through here? Or is this a lost cause? Hang on, let me show you my first beautiful sunflower that just opened today. Isn't that gorgeous? I mean, come on. That is beautiful. I think it looks so pretty with the cosmos too. This is gorgeous. Gonna be really nice when there's a few of them all open together. I think that's gonna be so pretty. It's pretty tall. All right, we're doing it. I'm gonna have to go sideways, I think. Oh gosh, I'm tangled. Hang on. Okay, we did it. All right, this is where I pulled out my bolted spinach. If you remember from my last video, I think I had spinach and like pak choy and a bunch of onions in here. Pulled all that out, good to go. I'm growing the pumpkins and butternut squash or whatever's in here. Um, they're gonna vine and I'm, I put this little fence here to remind me not to walk that way because we're gonna just vine those down the walkway and then that way we can plant a little bit more in here saving space. Those onions will be coming out soon. Those were a later sowing, so I'm hoping they don't go to seed before they're ready, because they're not, I mean, some of them are still pretty small. So hopefully they'll get bigger before they go to seed. Um, carrots, you guys, we have been eating so many carrots, I don't even know what to do with myself. 
they're amazing and there's still like a ton <laughs> another row that I pulled what it was here cabbages took those out this week and we'll be putting in maybe some I don't know bush beans oh no I planted some acorn squash so I put the forks here sometimes like I just forget that I planted seeds in areas and I'm really bad at marking them so I just put like random objects to remind myself <laughs> that there's seeds planted there yeah real I've got a real professional situation going on over here all right what did I miss let's see go back around oh my scrunchie tomatoes these are the sweeties they're so cute I can't wait for them to ripen so I can eat some I might need to prune some of these I think because we get such a late start on our tomato growing season that I think the plant is really interested in growing leaves and not as interested in producing nice red juicy fruit so these beautiful cosmos these are called candy stripe I showed these in my video these also are getting kind of really bothered by the earwigs I think I need to set some more traps I tried the oil and soy sauce traps or whatever I think they work pretty good I think they're all right but they still I mean I don't know I just it's kind of a lost cause I don't think anything really helps when they're this bad Everyone in the area has been saying they're really, really bad this year, too. Like, worse than ever. So, it's not just me, I guess. More sunflowers coming up. And these were sunflowers. A couple of these that I didn't thin. Like, where are they? These two right here. Like, right next to each other. I planted two right next to each other, and I didn't thin them, and they're, like, totally fine. So I'm like, ooh, more sunflower per square foot. That's kind of cool. They're fine, they don't care. So there you have it. Maybe, let me see what's the best angle to give you like a whole overview. I think I came back here last time and did a little pan. So thanks for tuning in. I hope that when you watch my videos, you get an idea of just how much food you can grow in a small space.